fathers a happy Father's Day. And I believe a, t- a day like today can be a new beginning. There are fathers here that maybe have regrets. And you're thinking, I wish I was more aware of my fatherhood. If I could do it all over again, I'd do it differently. And I think all of us can say that. But there's no need to live in the past. There has to be a time where you receive forgiveness for your shortcomings, of course, the mistakes you've made. There's not a person here that hasn't made mistakes. There are those that are aware, and there might be those that are in denial, but we've all made mistakes. This is a place where God reaches out to people that are hurting, broken, have some regrets, and he says, it's okay. I love you, I'll forgive you, and I'll help you start over. Isn't that good? I was just thinking about one of our pastors in Pomona, Pastor Chris, how Pastor Chris was one of the gang leaders for one of the bike gangs around here, the Vagos, and how he came into a building like this with a marriage that was falling apart because of how abusive he was, the lifestyle that he was leading. He wasn't a father he should have been. He was out there on the streets being a criminal. He came into this building and he said, something has to change. I don't want to continue losing my family, losing my dignity, using my life to hurt people. And he made a decision. I can't change myself. But if there's a God that can change me, I open my heart. Jesus, save me. Forgive me. Set me free. No matter what condition you're in today, the one that created the heavens and the earth can change your your life. You can have a big new beginning today. Today we're going to have Daryl Strawberry. He's going to be speaking in just a second. And we got our church in Arizona is checking in right now. They're watching right now. They're watching with us right now. Let's give a Lord a hand for our new church in Arizona. Pastor Roberts over there. We got some of our team in Compton right now. They're right now watching in Compton in homes right now. They're doing watch parties. We're going to continue. Even in Kenya, we got teams checking in with us and And we have an orphanage in Kenya that's reaching out to kids that that have been abandoned by life and everybody else. But they're not abandoned anymore because they're in our family. They got brand new beds. Come on, they got a place to live. And now, this this year, in September, right around there, we're going to be launching a brand new Christian school in Kenya. Starting with those orphans. A lot of great things are happening. And it all starts off with one person saying yes. Fathers, if you could say yes, you could affect your children, affect your neighborhood, your city, and then they could say yes. If Daryl Strawberry doesn't say yes today, there's some, some of you today that wouldn't say yes to Jesus unless he came today. His testimony is going to give you an opportunity to make a decision to allow Jesus in your life and receive the gift of eternal life. Every single person needs Jesus. Once you die, the only thing that's going to matter is whether you receive Jesus or not. Daryl Strawberry, after it was all said and done, of course, he was a great baseball player, eight-time All-Star, 335 home runs, He's only one of 10 baseball players to join the 30-30 club where he hit 39 home runs and 36 stolen bases. 
four-time, four-time world champion baseball player with the with with the Mets and three times with the Yankees. But his great, I just talked to him. He goes, all of that, he told me, it's not about baseball. It's about what he's doing right now, transforming his lives with his testimony. On Wikipedia, it says about his personal life, he is a born again evangelical Christian. Let's give Daryl Strawberry, come on, a way we're all outreach welcome and let him know we're ready. Come on, we're ready to see from here, hear his story. Daryl Strawberry, come on. I, I know I just made a friend. Me and him are buddies already. And he goes, you got a Dodger shirt that says Garcia? I go, yeah, let me tell you about my Little League days. I was good, man. <laughs> we'll talk about that later, though. Love you, Daryl. Love you too, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Garcia. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give, give your pastor a hand. Oh, glory to God. What a wonderful day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Remain standing. Um, this is a great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All you dads here, happy Father's Day. No matter what, no matter what the enemy has said, God's got a plan for your life. You need to know that. He's got the perfect plan for your life. You don't have the perfect plan, but God has the perfect plan. Amen. Let me pray over you, church. Let me pray over you. Oh, I love a thriving church. I love a church with energy. I love a worship team that worship God, and we celebrate God. We worship everything else, but we forget to worship Jesus. Jesus is the most important person we're supposed to worship. We're supposed to give him the glory. Not us, not a man. We're just a man. We're like Jesus, but Jesus wasn't broken. All the rest of us would fall short of the glory of God. So when you come to that place and you come to church, expect something from God. Man, when I go to church, I expect something from God. I just don't want to walk into church. I just don't want to be a hypocrite no more, walk into church, talk about I know Jesus and denying his power. Let us pray. Father, we love you, honor you, praise you. And Father, we give you glory for what you're about to do. And Father, the lives that are here today, someone has come in here with anxiety, depression, struggles, broken heart. But Father, you're the healer of everything. And we pray over them right now that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We bind every assignment that the enemy has. We rebuke the devourer right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory because you're about to transform some lives. Someone's gonna be touched. Holy Spirit, make your way in this place. You are welcome in this place. Do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you're about to do. Victory is coming for somebody today. Victory is on the other side of you getting up and walking out the door and coming to church. God's got a word for you, and he's going to set you free. Today is your day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's time to be glad in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No other name but Jesus. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Garcia. We, we'll, we'll talk later about your Little League days. Because uh. <laughs> we all had those Little League days. Uh, I'm going to be great, you know. <laughs> I remember those days, too. And, and just thank you for your, your heart and your ministry and, and what you do and what it's really all about. Because, see, when you go and sit with a pastor and you hear his heart and you understand that he has a heart for souls, that's, all, that's what it's all about. It's, it's not about us. It's about winning souls. You know, God saves us to go help somebody else get transformed. You know, and I stand on this platform. I wasn't always like this. You know, I was a heathen. I was a womanizer. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I was a sinner. I was rich, famous, privileged, lived kind, community gates, had it all, but had nothing. And then I would end up being saved by grace. Saved by the grace of God. 
I'm going to give you a little bit of the testimony, and then I'm going to bring the word to you. But I was saved by the grace of God because no man can save himself. My dad was a raging alcoholic, and he beat the crap out of us. Came home for the last time, pulled out a shotgun, said he was going to kill the whole family when I was 14. My mom looked at me and my brothers. My brother Ronnie grabbed a butcher knife, and I grabbed a frying pan. We had had it. My mom looked at us and told us, get out of the house because she knew we were going to kill him that night. And it could have been a tragedy in my life before I ever put the uniform on. I was already broken when I put the uniform on. So I always say my pain led me to my greatness. My greatness would eventually lead me to my destructive behavior. Because brokenness is real. Lawlessness brings about brokenness. Now, if you never get well on the inside and you can't make yourself well, you can look good on the outside, you can dress yourself up on the outside, and make yourself look good on the outside, but what do you look like on the inside? You can't get yourself well on the inside. I tried everything, had it all, but had nothing. See, wearing a baseball jersey and a uniform just made me a baseball player. I didn't become a man until I met Jesus. I didn't become a man until I met Jesus. You won't become a man because you got a job and you make money and you have stuff. That does not make you a man. That just makes you another person still sitting here and empty on the inside. But when you meet Jesus, you will become the man that God created you to be. See, like, we're like, see, we sit in this place in our life, and I was too, you know, straddling that fence and being a hypocrite and talking about Jesus but not denying the power of Jesus. Denying it. All of us go through that process, denying the power of Jesus. Because, see, the power of Jesus is far greater than anything that you will ever experience. When you understand he hung on the cross at Calvary and he shed his blood for you, and we, just like the scribes and the Pharisees, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Then he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? But his last words on the cross it completed it all. It is finished. Everything that kills us, Jesus already killed it. Already killed it. How did he kill it? He went to the tomb. He went to the tomb, and early Sunday morning, he got up from the tomb. And when he got up from the tomb, he got up with all power in his hands. See, when you die from the flesh of who you are and you be resurrected just like Christ, you will get up with all power. Galatians 2.20 talks about it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. I don't know if y'all came to see a baseball player or y'all came to see somebody preach the gospel. I'm sorry, but I didn't wear my jersey today. I retired. <laughs> that guy no longer live. That guy is dead. God's got a great plan for our life, and it has nothing to do with what we do. It has to do with who he wants us to become in Christ. See, I didn't grow up living behind a white picket fence because there is none. In my Bible, it says that um, we all would fall short of the glory. It didn't say some of us. It said every last one of us that come here is going to fall short. But I know one that's great that can change the course of your life and the direction where he needs to take you if you're persistent and you surrender yourself. See, having, not having a father and having him rejected me and not being in my life left me broken, me and my family. But I can tell you, I had a praying mama. Whoo! I can't wait to see her to tell her thank you. She, she, she was dying, and she was dying at the age of 55. She passed away from terminal breast cancer. Little did I know, she told me before she died, she said, you're going to go through it, but God's going to get it out of you. See, so for some of you mothers in here today, you just keep praying. It's not up to you to see the miracle that may happen in the natural, but you'll watch it in the supernatural. You just keep praying and you just keep believing because God's got a plan. My sister found a journal under my mother's bed after she died, and my sister gave me the journal, and in the book she was praying for every last one of us. And when I got to me in the journal, you know what she had on the, on the prayer line for me? God, knock him off of his throne. See, Mama wasn't concerned about my success. She wasn't concerned about the Major League Baseball player making millions of dollars. She was more concerned about my salvation than me playing Major League Baseball. So some of us need to know that today. God is more concerned about your salvation than what you do. It's the salvation of a man that will transform him and lead him into the greatness that God has for him. God has something 
greater than you can ever imagine. I could never imagine that God wanted me to preach the gospel when he called me 15 years ago. I goes, you got the wrong guy. I said, don't you know what I did? I was living a heathen lifestyle and, and, and doing all kinds of things. And he goes, yeah, that's why I spared you. That's why I spared you. I ended up in a Florida State prison, T17169, because of addiction. Ended up having cancer twice and losing my left kidney in the second surgery. You can't tell me God's not a miracle maker. <laughs> See, God is not looking for a perfect person. He's looking for someone that's available. Someone that's really want to give themselves to him and do his will and never make it about themselves, but make it about the kingdom. See, when you understand the kingdom, when you understand the kingdom of God, then you'll understand you. Oh, y'all missed that. When you understand the kingdom of God, then you'll understand you. Because when you understand the kingdom of God, then God will let you hear from his kingdom. See, Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added into you. See, he can't add things into you if he does not know you. See, there has to be a relationship. There has to be a commitment. There has to be a surrender. There has to be a persistence to be able to go after God every day, not just one day. Everybody want God. When, everybody want to knock on the door when God when you're going through something. But when you're going good, you can't find you. Can't find you. <laughs> nowhere to be seen. Nowhere in church. Nowhere doing something. Nowhere helping somebody. Because this ministry of God is about helping others. Because when you, my life didn't get like this overnight. My mama prayed for me. My dad was a broken man. He ended up in a hospital. God sends me down to him after he transformed me. He sends me to my father in the hospital in San Diego. I was getting ready to preach at a men's prayer breakfast. He sends me to the hospital, speaks to me on a Friday night, and says, go down and see your father in the hospital, and I want you to repent to him. I said, what? He says, I want you to repent to him and ask him to forgive you for keeping him out of my life and my career and not knowing his grandchildren. And I called my wife. I said, you need to pray for me because God wants me to go extend forgiveness to my father. So I, I do exactly, she said, you need to go. You need to do what God says. So I go and I get there and I said, you, you know the Lord has changed my life. Will you forgive me for keeping you out of my life and career and not knowing your grandkids? And he shook his head and said, yes. And a tear came out of his eye and I lost it. I just laid in his lap and cried. A few minutes later, God said, raise up. He says, now lead him in the center of prayer. The man that rejected me and beat me and, 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 and never had a part of my life, there was. I said, God has changed me. Would you like to accept him as Lord over your life? And he said, yes. And I led him in the center of prayer. And then he passed away six months later. But God was reminding me the forgiveness was not for my father. The forgiveness was for me. I was never free because I wouldn't release him. See, everybody wants victory, but you holding you holding somebody hostage, and you can't get free yourself. We wonder why we can never get free. See, I'm free now because of no longer bondage, and God released me in, in that moment of time. But you know what God said to me in that moment of time? He says, "How dare you not forgive him, and I forgave you? I extended the grace to you. How dare you not give someone else grace?" I've given grace to you. See, we don't understand grace. Grace is something that you don't deserve, and he gives it to you anyway. And it takes you to a whole different place in who you are and your walk and what you're supposed to do. We all have to overcome something. But don't sit on the fence and believe you're a victim. I'm not a victim of what happened to me. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. 
See, if we play that victim role, we can never get free. We can never enter in. I can never do what God's called me to do. I can never know who I am. I can never be crowned from the top of the head to the bottom of my feet because I'm playing a victim role. I'm a victim, a victim, victim. No, I'm not a victim. I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus has already done it for me. Why? Who is Jesus? He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. By his stripes, by his stripes, by his stripes, you get to be healed. You get to walk out a whole different life. You don't have to carry the extra junk in your trunk. I don't have to carry that in my trunk no more because I'm free. And when he sets you free, you're free. You don't have to go back. You do not have to go back. This works, this book has been working forever. Heaven and earth gonna pass away, but not my word. Everything around us gonna pass away, but not the word. God's gonna take it, he's gonna deposit it down to somebody. Somebody like Pastor said, when you say yes, 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 yes is a three-letter word with God. Y-E-S, you enjoy salvation. You get to enjoy salvation. But I can't get salvation if I don't get rid of my ego. Ego, here at Father's Day, ego, a man, ego, yeah, I got this. Well, go ahead, your ego, three-letter word, easing God out. P pushing God right out. <laughs> and that's what I love about God. He, you know, he, he's, like I said, he's not looking for perfect people because when you go to the Bible and you look at all the people in the Bible that he called, they was just like us. <laughs> A different generation of people, but they was just like us. They all had issues. They all had to overcome. Moses using, being mightily used by God to lead the Israelites out of bondage. Moses walked with meekness. He couldn't even speak. And God used him mightily to part the Red Sea. And he'd do all these things. And they saw all the miracles. And they could have been in the promised lands in 11 days, but they complained so much, God sent them in the wilderness for another 40 years. That's what I love about God. He will leave you stuck if you want to stay stuck. But he will also help you and push you into your destiny. If you surrender yourself, if you allow the transformation to come, if you do the Romans 12, 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing. What renews me is the word of God. You can't renew yourself. It's the word of God. It's saturating yourself in land with God and the word of God, reading, eating, feeding yourself, and turning away from all these wicked things. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. He says, turn. You got to turn. You got to turn from these worldly things. You got to turn. You got to turn from social media. You got to turn from the internet. You got to turn turn from CNN, you got to turn from Fox, you got to turn all that stuff off and tune yourself into the Word of God, the living Word of God, the living Word of God, to be an overcomer, to be an overcomer, overcoming the temptations. You got, oh, hallelujah, glory to, glory to God, glory to God. Oh. <laughs> glory to God. See, overcoming these worldly temptations or for all of us. How do you overcome them? Well, I'm tempted. The devil tempted me. Well, he gonna keep tempting you. What are you gonna do? He tempted Jesus. When you go to Matthew 4, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. And you think about the fact he was hungry, and the devil wanted him to turn these stones into bread. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 4, 4? But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word of God. You know what comes out of this Bible? Fire. Fire. It gets down inside of you and it's fire. If you participate in the calling up on your life, God will reveal himself to you. He cannot reveal himself to you if he does not know you. If you do not partner with him, he does not know you. It has to be a relationship with him. It has to be a commitment because the enemy is busy. He's busy. Look at the society. Look at the church. This is what the church is supposed to be like. This is what heaven's going to look like. Every color. 
Because we're sitting on we sitting on the sideline and we thinking, well, it's, it's, it's this color and that color. No, 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 no. Jesus ain't coming back for a white person, black person, Spanish person, an Asian person. He's coming back for a holy person. We need to get this right. We need to get this right. We need to get this right. We need to stop believing this madness, what everybody's talking about, what they're trying to fill us up with. No, that's madness. That's worldly stuff. Jesus talks about it in John 10, 10. He said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. Abundant life is peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, power. You have everything that you understand because you understand the word of God. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. It's the lack of knowledge that keeps people from going forward. Because you know what people end up with? They end up, they end up with earthly knowledge and no kingdom knowledge. See, once about a time I had a lot of earthly knowledge, playing Major League Baseball, hitting home runs, doing all these great things. The devil is a liar. Because he wanted to keep me stuck on the uniform. He lies to us. We want to keep you stuck. That's who you are. No, that's what I used to do. Who I am in, who I am in Christ comes from the revelation of my relationship with Jesus. You know? And overcoming these temptations, this, this, this is so good because that's what the enemy wants you not to know. All this Matthew 4, 4. But he, but he answered and said, it is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There is no perfect people. It's only one, Christ himself. The rest of us are sinners that need a savior. For the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23. See, <laughs> it's glory to God. See, when, when, the, when the Lord finally got a hold of me, it was over because he stopped me. He said, you're going to preach the gospel. I said, I don't want to preach. He said, you're going to preach. I said, I'm not qualified. He says, no one is qualified. I qualify to call. We all look to try to qualify ourselves, and God is the one who qualifies the call. Overcoming the temptations. Everyone has temptations, but some folks entertain them. Get your eyes off the temptations and keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on Christ. Why you keep your eyes on Christ? Because Jesus is a holy man. Jesus is a righteous man. Jesus is a man with no sin. He does not judge anyone. He sets people free. That's his whole purpose for coming, is to be able to set you free so you can have victory. So you can have victory over all these earthly things. I don't entertain these earthly things. We didn't get into like 3 in the morning, and, it, and I got to get up the next day and go preach. I goes, devil, you a liar. I'm going to do my father's work. Nothing's going to get in the way of that. When we're, leaving, when we're living a heathen life, and we're out there doing an electric slide to the left, to the right, to the back, to the front, dip, baby. We're not thinking about anything. But we're in the last days of time where we see the enemy is busy. If you get killed or something happens, where are you going? This is not a game. We are in it. It can happen to any one of us anywhere these days. See, I do know one thing with my life. Absence from the body will be presence with the Lord. I do know that I will go home. Are you guaranteed to go home? Don't keep saying, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. There might not never be another tomorrow. Today is the day you answer that call that God is calling, that the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and saying, surrender your life. Give your life to Christ. Stop playing all these games with yourself. Overcome all these temptations. You can't overcome them by yourself. It's not about money. It's not about success. Jesus is the greatest success person I ever met. He got up from the tomb. Nobody else will ever get up. We need to be praising him and worshiping him.
glorifying him, magnifying him. We need to be talking about him and not all these other things. Well, the news said that, and they said that. Well, what is the Bible saying to you? Greater that he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's the great one that rules and reigns inside of you. See, when you get that download inside of you about this book here, you will never, ever need anything else. People say, well, you could have made it to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I probably could have made it to the Hall of Fame and, and made a lot more money playing baseball, but I would have never met Jesus. I wouldn't have never met Jesus. I'd be like every other celebrity, still on the highlight reel, talking about themselves and talking about their success and never talking about the kingdom of God. Never, never thinking about winning souls because they're not thinking about winning souls. They're thinking about having more of this, more of that, and more of that. The devil's a liar. He ain't telling them, by the way, you're going to hell with me when your life is over because that's what he was trying to tell me. He forgot to tell me that part. By the way, you can live like this, but you're going to hell with me after it's all over, said and done. We need to stop saying this game to people and when people passing away and they don't, they, just because they're celebrities or whatever they are and they're passing away old and old, you know, dying from all kind of stuff and people saying, well rest in peace, rest in heaven, you're on the other side now, well the devil is lying to you you better read this book we need to stop playing with folks because folks are not getting into this kingdom and I'm going to tell you that in a little bit when I go to the book of John It's an open invitation to get in there, but you're going to have this requirements that take place from us to do what this book says, not what folks are talking about. Because folks are going to be talking. You see, they was talking about me when I was a heathen. Now they're talking about me because I love Jesus. Just get over it. They're going to talk about you anyway. <laughs> Point number two, it's not the temptation you have. But the decision you make about them is what counts. It's not the temptation that we have. It's the decision you make. Well, guys, happy Father's Day. Let me tell you, Delilah's and Jezebel's are real. You better learn how to run. They say, what do you do? I say, I run. Thought I was running fast, stealing bases when I was playing baseball. When them Delilah's and Jezebel get around me, Boom, I'm gone. <laughs> See, because you, you, you'll, you'll leave the door open for the enemy and he'll walk right through. See, because this is a spiritual game in our life that we play with ourselves, you know. If you're going to be spiritual, be spiritual. If you're going to be of the flesh, be of the flesh, whatever you want to do. But I have to stay in the spirit. I have to not kid myself about things. You know, because I'm happily married. My wife has blessed me, you know, because God used her 23 years ago. She's got 23 years of recovery. God used her pulling me out of dope houses. I was shooting dope, smoking crack, $3 million in debt. God used her to pull me out of dope houses. And when she was pulling me out of dope houses in South Florida, she said, God, she was like, God has a plan for you. And I said, won't you and that God just leave me here and let me die? She goes, you're just not that lucky. So what am I saying? God's going to always do what he's always done. He's going to always use people to help people. People to help people. Because when you go into the Bible and you have the relationship with Christ and you start knowing the Bible, you start knowing everybody that he was using in the Bible was just like us. He goes on to say, David is a man after my own heart. David, a womanizer, put his best man Uriah on the front line to be killed so he can have his wife Bathsheba. God goes on to say he's a man after my own heart. See, what God looks at is totally different from what we look at. See, God doesn't look at the appearance of what you have and the status of who you are. God looks at the heart of a man. Jonah, God told him to go to Nineveh to preach the gospel. He jumps on the boat the other way, go to Tarshish, being selfish. He was Jewish. Told him to go preach the gospel and tell him to repent. Forty days from now, I'm going to destroy the whole city if they don't. Jonah jumps on the boat to go the other way. God throws him in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. See, God's got a plan. God is not short of a plan. See, everybody thought the plan of my life 
was a waste. No, God had a plan. God didn't want me to reach any more stardom. God wanted me to become the evangelist that he created me to be. And for you too. See, because when you come to that place of doing God's will and knowing who you are in Christ, you become a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you get to eat from a land that you don't even know about. It's God's land. See, everybody's trying to eat off this land here. And the Bible said heaven and earth going to pass away, but not my word. God's land is never going to pass away from what he's going to do when you participate and you walk with him. And I remember all my old teammates were saying when I was decided I was going to follow Jesus, and they were like, yeah, let's see how long this is going to last, Pastor. That's what they were saying. Let's see how long this is going to last. Well, it's been 20 years, and they're still waiting for me to come back. 20 years, and they're still waiting. So guess what that tells me? The word works. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have come new. I can't get to the new if I'm still holding on to the old. If I'm still talking about the old me, I can't get to the new because God's got something new every day you get up. Every day you spring up, he's got something new for you. All you got to do is enter in with him and worship him and thank him and praise him and give him glory. And he's got something new for you. The church needs to rise up. People need to know you can have victory if you just come to the place of believing what the Bible is talking about. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and do your part and God's going to set you free. Stop worrying about who hurt you, God will heal you if you just release them and you let them go. This is the day for you to do that. It's a day for you to walk out of here and become the person that God created you. God has created you for good. Oh my glory. God has created you for good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. Stop eating at Burger King and pick up the steak. Here it is right here. The full meal. Thank you, brother. God's got the whole meal ready for you. See, the Bible is the blueprint of who you are. You know how they have the blueprint for homes and they don't build? That's what the Bible is. The blueprint for who you are. But you got to commit. You got to involve yourself. You got to come to groups. You got to come to Bible study. You got to become a giver, not just a taker. To whom much is given, much is required. Man, I, let, me, let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I got to give you a little insight before I get down to the book of John. $3 million in debt. How am I going to get out of debt? My wife said, you need to take responsibility. Wow. I'm like, girl, you crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> but I did take responsibility, and God got me out of debt and gave me more than I was in debt. Because you know why? You get out of debt when you sow into the kingdom. Everybody think God needs your money. God does not need our money. God does not need me. He does not need you. He needs your heart. See, once you open your heart to him and you sow and you become a great kingdom person, God will clean up everything in your life. See, my mother taught me that principle when I was living a heathen lifestyle making millions of dollars. She taught me that principle to sow into the kingdom. See, me sowing into the kingdom even when I was lost, I was sowing hundreds of thousands of dollars into the kingdom. I was giving my mom money to put into the church. See, what, what I was doing is I was covering myself from the, the, the destructive behavior that was going to happen in my life, and God was going to spare me because I had the principle right. See, it's principle before personality. It's the principle that he looks at. And as I get down to closing in this service, John 3.30 talks about it. He must increase, but I must decrease. 
See, how did I get to know all these scriptures? I'm, I'm not that smart. I didn't go to school. But the Holy Spirit is. See, I ended up with a relationship with the Holy Spirit because God said the Holy Spirit is going to ascend up on you and he's going to teach you the Bible supernaturally. Saturate yourself and listen to him. So he taught me scripture. So when I got with the Holy Spirit, he became my pal. You know, he's my buddy. He walks with me and we talk and we hang out. And then he started teaching me scriptures. And then he started, I said, well, he said, what do you want me to do? And I said, retain them, not in my head, but in my belly. And he retained them down in my belly because my head is such a knucklehead. So when I look for the scriptures, I go down in my belly and I pull them out because he's there. It's the information, the revelation that God wants to give to you too. He wants you to be able to experience his goodness. It's the goodness of Jesus. It's not the goodness of us. It's the goodness of Jesus and what he wants to do. See, some of you men in here today, God wants to use you mightily, but you need to get over yourself. It's Father's Day, but you're not all that in the bag of chips. You need to get over yourself, and you need to become the man that God created you to be. You need to, you need to stop running from the church and run to the church. That's where you need to be. You need to learn how to make your house at the church. You need to become the man that God created you to be. He will give you something that you could never imagine, that you could never think that you would be able to do. Because you can't do it, but he can through you. See, I don't have to do this work because I know who I'm listening to. The Holy Spirit is the one preach. I don't preach. I just show up, and he show out. So as a book of John and like closing down, I just need to get this because I just need to do a call because there needs to be a call for some of you today to make a decision. Come back home, repent, ask God to forgive you. We got somebody that can play softly, right? All right. The book of John is about believing Jesus, the miracle maker. He's the miracle maker, turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000, raising Lazarus from the dead pulling Daryl Strawberry out of the pit, putting him in the poor pit. He's still doing miracles. Don't you want your miracle? He told Nicodemus in John 3, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about the natural birth. We've all been born in the natural. He's talking about the second birth, which is a spiritual birth, greater than anything you can ever imagine. I remember when God called me and God said, there's no secrets. Because we all think we got secrets. <laughs> He was like, I, he's like, by the way, I need to let you know I saw everything you're doing. I was like, everything? He was like, everything. Because in John 4, he tells that woman at the well about her f five husbands and the one you with now is not your husband. But he was telling this woman about this living water of who he is. If you drink this living water, you will never thirst again. See, ever since I've been drinking this living water of Jesus, I've never been thirsty again. See, if you drink this living water of Jesus, you'll never be thirsty again. He was, because the woman was thinking that water was good. He was telling her, no, this water I give you, you will never thirst again. Never. Some of you need to drink this living water today so you stop being thirsty. Because the water you keep drinking just keeps running out of you. And you got nothing left. You need the living water. John 8, don't be like the scribes and Pharisees pointing at somebody's sin. Jesus was hanging out, and they wanted, they pointed at a woman because she was caught in adultery. They wanted to stone her because of the law of Moses. Jesus didn't come here to destroy the law. Jesus came here to fulfill the law. They wanted to stone her and point at her sins, and Jesus raised up and said, he who without sin cast the first stone. From the oldest to the youngest dropped these stones and walked away because every last one of them had fallen short of the glory of God. And the last one. John 5, the pool of Bethesda, a man sat there with a condition for 38 years. You know what I love about Jesus? Jesus didn't ask that man about his condition. You know why? Because he already knew the condition of the man. Just like every last one of you here today, Jesus already know the condition of you. You know what he asked that man? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? And he says, sir, every time I try to get in the pool, he's not talking about the excuses. Get rid of the excuses. Jesus is asking some of you today, do you want to be well? And the man said, yes. He says, pick up your bed and walk and made him well. That's the call for you today. Especially you men, Father's Day. Today is the day that you get well. 
Now, as we close down, I don't want you worrying about what nobody else thinks because this is about victory over your life, over your situation, over your household. God wants to bless you. If that's you and you've never been saved and you want to meet the Savior, this is the day to meet him. And that's you if you want to come back and repent and ask God to forgive you. As they make their way down, I would tell you, don't worry about what anybody else think. Make your way down to the cross. Because see, at the symbol of the cross is where the victory. At the symbol of the cross is where the victory. Now, if that's you, as I make the call, you that would have anxiety, you that have depression, you that need a miracle from God, make your way down here now today. This is the day right now for you to say, I want to be free. I want to have victory over these circumstances in my life. If that's you, come now, right now, as they play, as they play. Come right now. Come, 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 come. Get up out of your seat. Get up out of your seat. Don't miss. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look at somebody else. Come. God's got something for you. Come. Surrender it right now. Surrender it all. Surrender your life to him. Come right now. You, if you need to forgive somebody and release somebody, come right now. Let God do it for you. Come. 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 Let's go. It's time. Make the move to the cross. To the cross. Come. Jesus loves you. Jesus is crazy about you. No weapon for him to get you. You're prospered. God's crazy about you. Come, come. Yes, give him a hand. I said right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. There's more of you. There's more of you that need to come. There's more of you that need to let go. Yes. Yes. Keep coming. Don't stop. Don't stop. You need a miracle right now? Come. You need a miracle from God right now? Come. Don't walk out of here without getting your miracle from God. He's got something for you. He's supernatural. He's not natural. He's supernatural. He's the great I am. He loves you no matter what. Glory to God. Some of you are sitting here and you got issues with alcohol and you want to be set free, God is doing the miracle for you right now. Come. God delivered me and set me free from alcohol and drugs. Never, never touched it again. Over 20 years set free from the bondage of it. You can be free too. You can be free too right now today. Right now. All you got to do is say, here I am, Lord. I surrender. I surrender myself to you. I surrender myself to you, Lord. Come, I still got more time. Don't worry about what anyone else think. I almost missed heaven because I was worried about what other folks were thinking. Other folks still holding on to they see God's stuff too. They just keep walking by and think, well, it's going to change. No, it's going to change when you make a commitment to God. That's when the change happens. That's when the transformation takes place. That's when the victory comes in your life. When you come to the altar, you come to the cross, at the symbol of the cross, at the symbol of the cross, Jesus already did it for you at the cross. All you got to do is come and surrender it to him. You're not a mistake. We just make mistakes. God loves you. Get out of sin. You don't have to live in sin. Jesus already paid the price for you to have the victory over all this stuff. Is there any more? Any more? Any more? Some of your dads in here, you need to be at this cross with your family and get this prayer and get this covenant over your family. Because I'm telling you right now, the devil is not playing. If you're not lined up with God, he's going to destroy your kids. This is not a game. He's already destroying them. Kids going into school, killing kids. We are in the times. Dads, get your heart right. Stop playing this game. Oh, I got it all together. No, you don't have to have it all together because none of us got it all together. But Christ got it all together.
Any more? Any more? Come. There you go. Come on, Dad. Right, give him a hand. That's it. Come on. That's it. That's what a real man is when you walk down and say, no more. I need to make a change. I need to do something different. <clears throat> I need to have my family covered by the blood of the Lamb. All this other stuff, trying to make more money in this. No, that ain't going to cover your family. What's going to cover your family is your right relationship with God and being the man that God called you to be and surrendering your life and saying, Lord, I am here. He sees you. He knows you. Every last one of us. Come, there you go. There's another family. That other man, bring your family. That's it. Where's Pastor at? Pastor, come here, brother. I love you. Y'all got a good thing going on here. Y'all need to know that. You need to know the importance of church and how good church is and having a good leader that loves his people. And I can tell you right now, just coming in here and meeting him today, you got a pastor that loves his people. And these are your people, pastor. And God has called them for you. And you pray them out. You cover them. Let's give the Lord a hand for what he's done already. Yeah. We're going to pray. I'm going to dismiss everybody's stand. I'm going to dismiss in a second. But we're going to pray. If you're here for the first time, as people are coming forward, and some are coming their first time here and they're taking action, this is how it begins with a yes. This is what Jesus has done through a message, is how he does it. He knocks on your heart's door. And when he knocks, just like anybody knocks on your house door, you can open the door or act like you're not home. I'm not opening that door. No one is going to get to heaven by accident. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am. And no one, no one, absolutely no one, goes to the Father but through me. There's a Bible verse that says this. He who has, he who has the Son, has Jesus, has eternal life. How simple the Bible is. He who does not have the Son does not have eternal life. I want you to get this. One day, you're going to breathe your last breath. All your accomplishments, money, things, houses, prestige, titles, all that is gone. And that's why Jesus says this. What does the prophet a man to gain the whole world and then lose your soul? Is a drug worth it? Is position worth it? Is your pride worth it? Is your adulterous affair worth it? Or maybe just a thought like this. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Me being a pastor in the city for 18 years, I've seen so many thousands and thousands of people come to this church. And I've, and I've seen thousands of people make a decision. I come the way I am. You don't fix your life and come to God. You come with your pain. You come with your hurt. You come with your depression. You come with your addiction. You come with your failure. And he accepts you and forgives you and gives you a new life. This is where it begins right now, choice and action. But I've seen people, not now, later, and I've seen them literally within hours of leaving the church, 
die. I've seen some of them on the front page of the Sun Telegram on Monday. Gone for eternity. Rich, poor, young, old. Happens. And God brings you to a place like this to a point of decision. Call on me. I'll forgive you. I'll save you. I'll remove the penalty for your sins. Sin is a crime. We've all done it against God. Some of us are really good criminals. You think you're a really good criminal because you've gotten away with your crimes. But in heaven you won't. The wage of sin is death. Not maybe death. For sure death. And death means this. First of all, misery on this earth. Because your sin will lead to emptiness, depression, addiction, pain, destruction, self-destruction, family destruction, mental destruction, children destruction, marriage destruction. This is guaranteed. If you're in sin, you're destroying your life. But it also means this. Eternal death. Eternal separation from God forever. Called the second death. There's a book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. And everyone's name that's, everyone that receives Christ as Lord and Savior, their names are written. Today's, what's today's date? June what? June 19th. Could this be the day that your name is written in the book in heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life for everyone to receive Christ, receive the eternal life, receive power, receive forgiveness? Could it be? Because if your name's not registered in that book, it's going to be a day you stand before God in judgment. You're going to open up that book and everyone's name that was not found in that book would have to pay the, pr the price for their crimes. The second death, which is a lake of fire forever. But Jesus died for you so you don't have to pay the price. See, justice must be served. Someone has to pay it. You pay it or he pays it. He paid it because you don't owe the debt you couldn't pay. He loves you. All you have to do is accept it. I'm going to pray. But before I pray, I want to give an opportunity because you might not have tomorrow. And you're in this room. And I love you. And I want to make sure you, give, you say yes and give you one more opportunity. But if you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. I, I know about Jesus. I've been a religious but I don't know Jesus. I've never accepted him as my Lord and Savior. That means you don't have him. He who has the Son has eternal life. He who does not have the Son does not have eternal life. Do you have the Son? He said, I don't know. But if you're saying, Pastor, I want to know. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want God to help me. I want eternal life. I want a new beginning. I want the, the payment and the price and the punishment to be removed. I need to get set free from an addiction, a bad habit. Today I need change. I want to be saved. I want to call on Jesus. When I count to three, I'll give you one more shot. You say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm right with God, but I want to get right with God. I want to receive Jesus. And I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. This is what I'm telling you. Why? Publicly confess them. Those that publicly confess Jesus as Lord are saved. Jesus said this, those who deny me, I will deny before the Father. Don't deny him, accept him. Give your life to Jesus. One, you said, I want to be forgiven. I need a new start. Two, when I say three, raise your hands. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm not sure I'm saved. Three, raise your hands to this building. I want to say yes. You're going to say yes by raising your hand. Come on. Anybody else? I see that hand. Proud of you. I see the hand in the back. I see the hand in the back. Come on. I see those hands way in the back. Come on. God still reaches somebody. We're fighting for souls right there. Those that raise their hands, could you do me one more big favor? Come forward real quick. Come on. This is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats and starting a new life with God. But you have to take a step. If you raise your hand, come forward. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Someone's been praying for him. Someone's been praying for her. Come on, they're still coming. Someone's going to get set free. Someone's going to have a brand new start. Let's pray. I'll wait one more, 30 seconds. Proud of you. Proud of you. Come on. Proud of you. Proud of you. There we go. All right. A new start begins. To, now, church, we're going to pray. This week is going to be a big week. This is a restart. We're going to be here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Church, we're an army. Let's all show up 
and do some warfare. Come on. Let's all show up and get some strength. Let's all show up and get some instruction from God. Three days for Jesus. It'll change your life. Give God saying, give me 72 hours. I'll change your life. Come on. Anybody going to give God three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You don't want to miss it here. We're going to be open. We want every one of you to come up. Please come. People are coming from all over. Let's come from wherever you live here. We're in California. Let's pray. We're going to pray right now. You're going to give your life to Jesus. Your next step after this is to get baptized and start our classes too. We're going to have some classes coming up. I'm going to help you grow spiritually. Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Say, Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner and I need you to save me. I believe that you died in my place so that I can be forgiven and receive the free gift of eternal life. I open my heart and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I turn away from doing it my way. I'm tired of my sin. I want to live for you. Make me new. Fill my heart with your spirit, with your joy, with your peace, and with your love. Today, I'm saved. I am now a follower of Jesus Christ a child of God. I thank you, Jesus. Fill me now with your power. In Jesus' name, amen. How many said that prayer and you meant it? Come on, awesome, proud of you. Okay, guys, this is your first step. Go to church every Sunday. Show up on Wednesday night, party with us three nights in a row. If you came here for the first time, I want to thank you. Happy Father's Day. We got a car show out there. We got... We got, we got the hot dogs. We got pitching contests out there. Enjoy yourself. Hang out. Have some fun.